welcome back to another episode of Lawson Farmer's Market Garden Shorts, now filmed with the new camera. So hopefully this is a better episode than the prior ones and the video quality is a little bit better, but we'll see. Anyway, we're talking about this. All this here. What a mess. What a mess. In fact, we're going to loosen the camera and rotate just a little bit so you can see. Look at all that. What a mess. What a mess. What is this mess, you ask? Well, the scientific name is Vigna unguiculata, and the specific variety names, even though you can't tell which is which, is black-eyed purple hole pea and iron and clay pea, and they've grown together into this gigantic wall of greenery. Sounds like a crime, doesn't it? However, it isn't. This is partially intentional. Now, the collective name for these plants are field peas or cow peas. If you look up field peas, you're going to get the wrong result in Google, chances are. But if you look up cow peas, you'll always get the right result, and cow peas are what we're talking about. They're in the Fabaceae family, which means they are in the peas, and they have nodules on their roots to fix nitrogen, just like every other pea, true pea imaginable. Not all beans do this, but peas and anything in legume does that. Now, they are originally native to Africa, they were brought over here during the transatlantic slave trade mostly, and then afterwards probably. Um, they are hardy in, well, they're not hardy in any zone. They're annuals from zones 5 through 11. Further north than that, and it is, the summers are too short and it is too cold for them to effectively function well. Their soil pH preference is 5.5 to 6.5, and their exposure preference is full sun to partial sun, which in this case they get full sun effectively, 8 hours or so. Now, their height can be up to 4 feet, and their width can be up to 2 feet per vine. However, there are dozens of vines here, so it's kind of impossible to tell which is which. But there's so much vining going on that it's... Look, they're even going into the tomato cage. It's absurd. It's truly absurd. And this patch, you can't even see the trellis they're growing on, is at least 2 feet wide. And about... And about six or seven feet long, so it's a lot of vineage. Now, as I said, they're aka field peas. The names are interchangeable effectively, but we're all referring to Vigna unguliculata. Now, the field peas are divided into four specific groups. Unguliculata, which is Crowder pea, Southern pea, Black Eyed pea, something called Nib and Neb Crowder peas, I did mention Crowder peas. Um, zipper peas, things like that. The, the ones we know and love, the ones we see at the store, are primarily in this group. By flora is the sow pea. Sow is in a female pig, and why it's called that, I don't know. I just couldn't really find a concisive answer. Sesquipedalus, which is the asparagus bean or the yardlong bean, you know, those ones you see sometimes as a novelty, those fall into that category, and those are an extremely long season plant, so just keep that in mind. They take a while to produce those mega-long beans. Anyway, textilis, which is a rare primitive type, I was not able to find pictures or descriptions that were clear and concise, so uh, maybe in a follow-up video. Now, um, these plants are all useful as animal forage. Iron and clay takes 100 days to produce mature seed pods, but 45 days to make leaf forage, which is what we have here. This is all leaf forage, effectively. There are some pods down there for you eagle-eyed folks, but they're dried. I didn't get to them in time. Purple hole black eye peas take 55 to 70 days until mature, which is probably what I should have planted. I mean, we have long summers here in North Carolina, but... Mm, eh. Now, there's some good news. Actually, I forgot a detail. I've got two details, folks, so let's let's go back to that. Where did the name Vigna come from? Well, it's named after Domenico Vigna, 17th century professor of botany. Unguiculata means small claw, which refers to the small stalks underneath the flower petals that look like little claws, like, like sort of cloven hooves. So that's where that comes from, unguiculata, ungula, referring to cows and things that chew and ruminate. That's where that's really coming from. Now, anyway... Here's the good news. For all this leaf foliage, I have two options. First and foremost, it is an amazing thing to add to your composter because it will decompose and make some really great dirt. So I could chop this all down, throw it in the composter, and call it a day. And I still win, even though I did not get any beans, or peas. 
whatever. I got nothing. However, nutritional info. Leaves per one cup chopped. They have 2.48 grams of protein, 1.48 grams of carbohydrates, and now here's the hit parade. <clears throat> 37 milligrams of calcium, 58.0.58 grams of iron, 0.33 grams of magnesium, oh no, 33 grams of magnesium, 22 grams of phosphorus, 186 grams of potassium, 3 grams of sodium, 0.13 grams of zinc, 0 0.082 grams of copper, 0.218 milligrams of manganese, 0 0.05 micrograms of selenium. They also contain B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B9, vitamin C, and vitamin A. So these are very healthy. And that's something you should consider. And sometimes the crop you want isn't the crop you get. Now, for the crop I was trying to get, why should you eat field peas slash cow peas? Well, here you go. This refers to raw, mature peas and 100 grams of them, which is basically equivalent to 3.53 ounces of them. So a pot of this, a big old stock pot of this cooked in with some sausage and some peppers will be amazing for you health-wise. <clears throat> 6.03 grams of carbs, 16 grams of sodium, 1,112 1, grams of potassium, 110 grams of calcium, 0 0.853 micrograms of copper, 2.52 grams of protein, 10.6 grams of fiber, gets better, 8.27 grams of iron, 184 grams of magnesium, 1.528 grams of manganese, 424 grams of phosphorus, 9 micrograms of selenium, 3.37 grams of zinc, 0 0.58 grams of biochannin A. I'll explain what that is in a second. And 633 micrograms of foliates. Now, what is biochannin A? It's essentially something found in the pea family, the legumes, that is essentially phytoestrogen. Now, before you guys out there worry about this, look at your black eyed peas, funny, whatever, don't worry. It won't make your balls fall off. You're not going to be able to reach falsetto. You'll be just fine. You have testosterone, which will neutralize it. It's fine. You'd have to eat an obnoxious amount of these things just to even have effect. Obnoxious amounts. Like, it would have to be your dietary food constantly. To even put a dent in your manliness. Relax. Now, there are... There are some other nutrients in the bee, in the peas themselves. They have niacin, pantheothenic acid, pyrox, pyridoxine, thiamine, and vitamin C. Tell me that is not one hell of a food. Tell me that is not. I dare you. Come on down here. I dare you. That, I mean, I, don't mind me. I'm putting the notes away. These peas are amazing. In fact, I'm going to cook up a pot of these leaves. And then later on, I'll do a little short video to let you know what it tasted like. Because in my research, finding out that these leaves are so damn nutritious that I could just use them as a stew green left and right, like gangbusters, convinced me. So, if I don't make a follow-up video, you know that I went to the hospital. It'll be a funny experiment. Yeah, guys, I'm on life support. Don't eat the beans. Who knows? But anyway... If you like this episode, or if you have any thoughts about growing field slash cow peas, just put them in the comments section. If you like this episode, hit the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, beyond that, there will be a link to the forage blog in the video description. And as always, folks, keep them growing. Thanks for watching. I hope you like the new video format. I hope the audio is okay. Thank you.